Okay, so back to the general case where we have x belonging to RD. So it has XD features. And what we would like to compute is the joint um, uh, probability density for all those features, right? So for example, if X belongs to R3, so um, we have only three features, then what we need to do, we just, uh, we're going to uh, plug this in into the um, R3 uh, space. And in this case, X has three uh, components, right? So this is the X vector. It's composed of X1, X2, and X3, so three features. And we also have the um, average or the mean for each feature across samples. So mu1, mu2, and mu3. So mu belongs to R3 too, okay? So what we need to do first is compute the um, uh, vector, the distance vector between x, x and mu uh, across all um, dimensions. And we transpose it. So that's why you guys see it um, uh, horizontal right here. And multiply by the inverse of the covariance matrix. So the covariance matrix has um, three by three dimensions because why we, we have that? Because we have three um, features, right? So we are in um, R3. And then we multiply it by the difference vector between the X vector, our um, feature vector, and the mean, uh, the mean vector, okay? So what do we notice here? There is an important quantity to compute the probability of uh, observing X. So it's uh, this one. So the dot product of um, X minus mu one uh, guided by the covariance uh, matrix. And if we note, this is, this is a scalar, uh, a single value number. And the closer it gets to zero, the larger the probability is. So P of X is larger uh, for smaller uh, for smaller x minus a mu transpose times the inverse of the covariance times x minus, minus mu. And we're going to see that this is what we call the uh, Mahalonibus distance. So, right, why we have this uh, kind of behavior? Because if you guys plot the function p of x, uh, or let's call it f of x, right? So f of x exponential minus x divided by 2, you will see that when x uh, comes closer to 0, f of x increases, okay? So now back to this uh, nice, um, nice uh, dot product. So what do we have? We have two cases that we will focus on. So the first one is, uh, well, uh, is the general case, and the second one is a special one. So in the special case where sigma is equal to the identity, so it kind of disappears here. So, you, so we only end up with having a dot product between x minus mu transpose times x minus mu. And uh, this is actually the, um, the Euclidean distance. It's just the definition of the Euclidean distance. And in the other case, if we keep the sigma, then this actually defines the Mahalanobis distance between x and mu. Now, let's look closer at this. For example, in this case, what do we have? We plotted the joint density, um, uh, the, prob the joint probability density function of two variables or two features, x1 and x2. And uh, here in the y-axis, we can measure the probability, right? So what can we see in this graph or in this plot? Uh, looking at the distribution or the uh, the relationship between uh, the first feature and the second feature. Remember, if you want to classify, we really need to pick the important, like interesting features. But we want those features to be um, to be uh, very informative in turn when we want to do the classification, right? And we want to explore their relationship. We want to understand how they co-vary, how they look like. So if we look at this graph, we can see um, many things. So we can see what's going on behind, right? So we can probably notice that the mean is centered around zero, right? 
And uh, that's it. We can really tell if x1 and x2 are correlated or not. So to solve this problem, we thought there is um, a potential, how do I say, like we can uh, try to cut this, um, this uh, nice Gaussian curve at different levels. And those levels are constant in uh, P, X1, X2. So they have constant probabilities. So by looking at those cuts, we can try to, um, we can better understand the relationship between the variables X1 and X2. So here, the P is a uh, constant, right? But has different values. For example, I don't know, maybe 0 0.02, um, uh, 0 uh, Two. The other one is like uh, 0, 0 0.0115. I don't know, like like constant values, right? So if we project those uh, nice rings or circles onto the um, two D uh, two dimensional plane where um, x one and x two live, we can get this nice graph. Okay, so by projecting those we can easily see what's what's going on how what is the relationship between um these these two variables so we do like we're projecting them onto this space right and remember each ring or each circle has a, a constant probability joint probability of observing x1 and x2 so we call these the level curves graph and they enable us to easily understand the covariance of these two features or these two variables so by visualizing them so in the case of the euclidean distance we know this that Right, so uh, remember guys, all of those are centered at the mean. So the center of this, um, these uh, nice circles uh, is uh, the average for um, x1 and average for x2. So that's the coordinate of the center, right, or the mean. And as we go further from the mean, what happens? What do we see? So the further away we go, we deviate from the mean in all these directions, the probability will, it will decrease, right? So the probability will decrease. So this is what we observe in this case. So in the case of the Euclidean distance, uh, everything is centered at the mean. This is, you know, um, x1 and x2. So first we see that the, they are independent because their covariance is equal to zero. Remember, the identity matrix is like has one on the diagonal and zero elsewhere, which means the covariance of, you know, x1 with x2 is equal to zero. And the variance of each uh, variable or each feature is equal uh, to one, right? So we have equal uh, variance, but they are independent in this space. And um, the points that locate at uh, equal Euclidean distance from the mean, right? So we have exactly the Euclidean distance. They have um, they have the same probability, okay? So they have exactly the same uh, probability. Now, what we also know this is um, the further away we go from the mean, so the the probability will uh, will decrease. So in this case here. And this measurement, the probability here is uh, larger than uh, the probability in the next ring or in the next circle. Now, for the Mahalanobis uh, distance, we know this that because of the uh, the multiplication or this uh, center, um, the covariance matrix, the inverse of the covariance matrix, we don't have circles anymore because our our covariance matrix is not necessarily equal to the identity matrix. So um, x1 and x2 might uh, vary along different, um, might, might co-vary and move uh, differently, whether positively or negatively. So they're not necessarily independent. And what we know this is uh, when we project those nice ellipsoids right here, so in this case, so we know this, we have two main directions. So one first direction where the px decreases fast, right? So you can reach this point uh, faster than the 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 orthogonal point on this um, on this uh, line, right? 
So here, Px decreases slowly, and uh, uh, in the other direction, the per perpendicular direction, it decreases fast. And what is very interesting that using this distance, even two points that might you look when you compute this dis distance using Euclidean, the Euclidean metric, right? Euclidean metric x t x, then you you might you would find that these are not equal. But if you compute them using the Mahalanobis distance, okay, in this case, um, x t x uh, uh, inverse of covariance uh, time, uh, times x, we they are they are equal actually, okay. So all points at equal Mahalanobis distance from mu, the center, the mean, right, lie on an ellipse, and. How can you think of generally the um, the covariance ma matrix? What is what does it do to the space or the data distribution or the uh, it generally um, it um, stretches it? It scales the data distribution uh, along different axes. Okay.